In this video, we look at local and global variables. Here, we see two separate subroutines written in Python. Roll two dice and display score bonus. They both declare their own local variables called X and Y. We can see multiple situations within each subroutine where X and Y are being used. As these variables have been declared locally, they do not interfere or conflict with each other. Even though they share the same name, they are four different variables that are totally independent of each other. Before we go on to global variables, pause the video and take some note on local variables. So we've updated our two subroutines to make use of a global variable this time called score. This variable has been declared and initialized to zero outside of these subroutines in the main body of the program. Adding the word global in Python before the variable inside each subroutine allows the subroutine to access this global variable. When the code in each subroutine updates the contents of score, it's updating the same single variable. You've essentially given access to a variable outside the subroutine, which would never normally see or know about. Although using this global keyword works inside a subroutine and allows us access to the global variable score, it's actually considered quite bad programming practice. If you did this in the exam, you would most likely receive marks for functionality, but you might lose marks for solution design or good programming practice. At IGCSE level, you might actually get away with it. But if you take this subject further into programming, you should really learn a better way. Let's look at a different method you can use for updating global variables without having to use this global keyword in Python. So here we've updated several lines of code and added some new ones to make this a better solution without using the global keyword inside the subroutines. Let's work through it now so you understand what's going on. So the main program starts under the comment main program starts here. We can see it calls the function roll two dice and passes in a copy of the global variable score when it does this. The global variable score has been copied and is now being used internally by roll two dice as a local version. The function executes as normal, but it is now only updating local versions of all its variables, and these include x, y, and score. When we hit the return lines, we now return two sets of values. We return the local copy of score, and it ends up back in the main program variable, ret score. Then we return the local copy of either X or Y, and it ends up back in the main program variable, high dice. We now print out which of the dice was higher. The value came from the roll two dice function and one of its local X or Y variables, but we are not using those anymore. Instead, it was passed back out to the global variable, high dice, and we're using that version. We now update our global copy of the score variable to become equal to the current value of ret score plus the result, which will be returned from the function 
display score bonus. As we call display score bonus, we again pass in a copy of the global variable score. Remember, the global variable score has been copied and can now be used internally by display score bonus as a local version. The function executes as normal, but it is now only updating local versions of all its variables. And again, these include x, y, and bonus. When we hit the return line, we now return the local copy of bonus. It ends up back in the main program and is used in the calculation to update the global version of the score variable. The final line of the program prints out the current score by accessing the contents of the global score variable and casting it to a string data type. That's everything you need to know about global variables. Pause the video and take some notes.